Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We are featuring Black Belt J, who got his Black Belt not too long ago, and he's actually one of the last few roles that I have at the Logic BJJ gym. So J plays a very, very devastating daily Heva position. He submitted me quite a few times on recorded roles that are on the channel with the Kyotera ankle lock from the daily Heva. So my main goal here is to stop him from getting into that daily Heva position, stopping his game and forcing him to play a reverse daily Heva position and a half guard position, which I favor uh, passing from there with my knee with my knee passing positions and my tripod passing positions. So here Jay is playing kind of a quasi half guard, quasi reverse daily heave position. And I'm using my right hand under his leg, hooking to his belt to lock myself in. And what I want to start doing is getting into a back stepping position where I can back step over his right leg, forcing him to kind of scramble and control the scramble with the grip I have on the belt and kind of step to my left, his right, and kind of circle around to the top of his head. So I can get into a north south position and start working from there. Jay is going to keep me at bay by using that cross collar grip. And with his right hand, he's going to try to grab my pant leg and that's because he wants to get under me and start getting into a single leg x x guard position and start elevating me and wrestling up jay is very very good at inverting using the lapel game and playing those guards that you have to be directly under the person because he's a bigger guy i actually forget that he's very very good at doing small guy stuff and that's what he wanted to do when he was trying to grab that pant leg now that we're in this position though i the grips that i want is i want my left hand on his lapel and i want my right hand to grab the top of his left knee which is making the knee shield from there i want to actually hit the back step or the long step i've been trying to incorporate those passing oh, those passing positions into my game a little bit more especially after buying the dalpra long stepping uh, master class so jay is going to do a very good job of preventing me from doing that so i'm going to have to stand up now to kind of force him back into this reverse daily heva position once i grab the grip that i want i'm going to try to hit a back step pass it's going to be um, not very convincing and jay is going to be able to kind of circle and follow me by and keep my leg trapped so I wasn't able to get the full back step and back step the leg out uh, or long step the leg out however you want to call it but now that I'm still in this position I can still go for all the passing that I like to do which is kind of smashing the legs together and passing to my left his right so I'm so focused on passing here that I'm making a very key mistake with my right arm. I'm leaving too much space open. Jay's going to realize that and start getting the underhook and start setting up the half guard position. Now Jay's squarely in the half guard position and I know that I'm going over so I'm going to take my left leg and swing it all the way around and get back to the close guard. I didn't want to get into a dogfight position and try to fight into him or have him wrestle up into me and start smashing me. So when I knew I was going over, I swung that leg out wide so I can get into a guard that I'm comfortable playing. If I'm going to get swept, I'd rather get swept into a guard that I am comfortable with. So now that I'm in this close guard position, I'm using my head as a post to make sure he can't bring his knees inside and open up the close guard. He's gonna do that multiple times. I'm just gonna post on my head try to strip the grip and I'm going to post on my left arm and start pushing him over and get into the mount position there. So I turned that guard break into a sweeping position and was able to get into the mount. And now Jay is going to trap my leg and start playing the almost like a deep half, but he's kind of facing away from me. My legs are still trapped in the deep half. He's going to try to turn into me and set up the deep half. And now I'm able to get my right arm under his leg and start getting back into the passing position I was in before I got swept. So now that I'm in this passing position again, I'm going to change what my right arm is doing i'm going to weave it in between his top knee shield and his bottom right hook you can't really see from this angle where my hands are gripping but my right hand is cupping his knee and my left hand is grabbing his lapel so once i have those two grips i'm going to angle my head down and then start cutting my right knee through as you can see here i kind of slide it through jay's able to recognize that and because i was using this leg weaving position he's now able to get um, a lasso on his left side but that's okay because i'm going to turn this into a tripod position using my head as the as the fulcrum here and I'm smashing his top leg over his bottom leg so I can have freedom of movement side to side. Jay is able to recognize that and square back up. So I'm going to keep this position here and start fighting from my toes, keeping my head down. Now what I'm going to do is start grabbing with my left hand the grip that I want. And as soon as I get that, I'm going to start angling for the knee weave or a shin weave passing position. As you can see here, I'm going to slide my right knee through 
over his shin and start using this position to walk towards his head. And while I'm walking towards the head, I'm keeping his leg smashed with this leg weave because I want to start attacking his exposed back. I'm no longer trying to pass into side control. So I force him back to his back. When he rolls into me, I'm going to let go of all the grips, hit the top spin to the exposed back, and now I can start attacking the back proper. So I'm going to start orienting myself and figuring out where I'm at, start to stick my right leg through for the first hook, and now I'm going to start attacking the neck. Jay is going to start defending the back by bringing his left arm up to his collar to stop me from getting the seatbelt position. And what you can't see from this angle is that he's on his shoulder, but he's also stripping my right foot, which is my first hook, and he's able to freely strip it and get to his side. But I'm going to stay pressure heavy on his back and on his hips. So I walk around to his hips and I want to just keep his hips nice and heavy while he's in this turtle position. And while he's in this turtle position, I'm still working to get my seatbelt grip. He's going to recognize that I'm starting to open up the lapels. He's going to try to roll through for the grand B roll. I'm going to be able to follow him and I'm going to keep this back position where I'm staying nice and heavy on his back and on his hips. That way, whenever he rolls, I can slow him down. So Jay now is going to get back into a turtle position. I'm going to take my right arm and I'm going to grab his lapel and I'm flaring out his lapels. I have both of his lapels with both my hands and when he tries to turn and grand B roll, I'm able to follow him. Now that I followed him again, I'm going to start to get my right foot in for my hook and then I'm able to get my left foot in for the second hook and finally secure the back proper. Now that I've taken the back, I'm trying to finish with a submission. Jay's going to realize that by trying to get his shoulders to the mat, I'm going to hip and force him the other way. He's going to take advantage of that by forcing his right hand to grab my foot on the rollover and stopping me from getting my hook in. When he grabs my foot again, I'm going to try to lock his hand in position, trying to trap it there. I'm not able to do so, and he's able to bring his hand back into the fight. So I'm fighting the grips, trying to get different positions to get under his neck. I'm not really able to finish it there, and that's going to be the end of the roll. So let's get right into this takeaway. This right arm that I'm using to grab his belt is exposing this 90 degree angle and giving him all the space he needs to hit an underhook. And instead of me recognizing that and letting go of the belt grip, I'm going to stay with the belt grip, giving him all the space he needs to get under me and get this half guard sweep. So the major takeaway here is be able to recognize when your elbows are being flared out at 90 degree angles and be willing and able to let go of a grip that feels secure when it's not serving you any purpose. That grip wasn't doing anything for me and the fact that I was stubbornly holding on to it allowed him to start setting up a beautiful half guard sweep. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for supporting the channel. It truly means more than you know. We only have a few more videos left of Logic BJJ content before we get into the Watson's martial arts content. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching the video once again and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.